In our previous video, we've discussed what brand guidelines are and what they generally include. Now, let's talk about how you can build the best brand guidelines for the future of your brand. Hey guys, welcome to Creative, where we help athletes, sports marketers, and athletic business owners learn how to build lasting legacies and beyond the game. Every Tuesdays and Thursdays, we talk about solutions that can truly change the business of sports. Today, we'll be discussing how to build the best brand guidelines in the market. We'd love for you to tackle that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything in the future. If you've seen our previous video on brand guidelines, then you already have an idea of what brand guidelines are and how they can generally help your business. Now we'll dive into the actual process of making them for your brand. So let's talk about that guide on how to build your own brand guidelines. Going back to our earlier video on brand guidelines, we mentioned that despite the common misconception around branding and design, your guidelines, or you can call them style guides, really start with the intangible elements of your brand. This means that before you could even start thinking about the visual elements of your brand, you need to discover your brand first. So we're going to break down seven steps you need on building the best brand guidelines for your business. First off, you want to think about who your brand really is. The first thing that your brand guidelines really need are the basics of your brand identity. As we've mentioned in our first video, who your brand is will dictate the rest of the inclusions of your style guide. So, before you get started, you really need to figure out who your brand really is. Because of how confusing and complicated brand building can be, some companies seek the help of experts to go through the brand discovery process. Brand discovery is meant to help businesses figure out who they are as a brand. They start looking into the audience they want to cater to, the kind of values they think their company carries, and other intangible components that form the foundation of their brand. Through these sessions, businesses will find the brand archetype that best describes their brand and start building their identity from there. Now, it may seem that brand discovery takes up a bunch of time, but your brand identity is the foundation of your brand guidelines. Every element, tangible or intangible, found in your style guidelines is dictated by your brand identity. Hence, it's important that you start your process on the right foot by thinking about who your brand really is. Next, you kind of want to think about where you want to be. With your brand identity all figured out, you can start planning your brand's positioning and brand promises. These elements are meant to showcase who your target market is and how you want them to perceive your brand. Keep in mind that your brand guidelines are meant to help you achieve your goals and it's important that everyone in the company knows that as well. With your positioning statement per se, you can rest easy knowing that members know where your brand plans to be. Start thinking about what makes you different from your competition and what makes you different from your competition through your said audience. Besides thinking about how you want your audience to perceive your brand, you also need to think about what makes you different from your competitors? This means that you need to create an elevator speech of some sort for your brand guidelines, showcasing who you are as a brand while setting you apart from your competition. Besides telling your fans what they can expect from your brand, it is important that your brand promises also convey why they should choose your company over your rivals. It should be able to appeal to your fans and leave them invested in your promise. Think of your whys, your brand's core values, as well as its mission 
and vision act as the whys and the hows of your entire being. Your mission is why you exist and why you're doing what you do. Your vision is what you hope to achieve and your core values dictate how you plan to reach your vision. Now, why is it important for your brands to have all three? These three serve as the foundation of every important aspect of your brand. Your mission, your goals, and your values dictate everything from the colors of your palette and the ways you communicate with your fans down to your conversion rate. Think of what you want to say to your audience. Now that we have our whys and hows, we can start developing the message that we want to convey to your fans and how you plan on sharing them. This means that besides your actual brand message, you have to also think about the tone and the voice of your messaging. Now, the tone and the voice that your brand will use highly depends on your brand's identity overall. To make things less complicated, some brands use brand archetypes, like mentioned in previous videos, that best fits them to figure out how they can communicate with their fans, also how their corporate employees can talk to their fans as well. And from there, they develop the rest of their brand identity. Keep in mind that your brand's message and voice will be universally used on a various of online and offline platforms your brands own. Meaning regardless of where the content is supposed to go, it needs to stay consistent with its voice. Objectively think of how your visuals appeal to your fans. Now that we've covered the intangible components of your brand guidelines, it's time for us to explore the tangible counterparts. Of course, the first thing that should be seen on your brand guidelines is your logo as well as the different variations that come with it. This segment should include a set strict of rules on how to use the logo and advisable sizes it should be used in depending on the platforms and media that you will be displaying it on. Some brand guidelines include their color palettes in this section of the guideline alongside instructions on how and when to use them properly. Another thing that should be included in this segment is other visual imagery you want a brand to be associated with like angles of photography, scenarios, things of that nature. Keep in mind that whenever you share online, whether it's visual or not, will be part of your entire brand identity and how your fans perceive it. So to make sure that you don't give away mixed signals or personalities that may mix you between someone else, this section of your brand guidelines should offer clear instructions on how to use your logo, color palettes, fonts, and other brand language elements. Overall, once you reach a certain part of your business, brand guidelines should be a must. Despite being a commonly known process, there's still a handful of companies who neglect brand guidelines as part of the brand identity process in the assumption that they can dominate today's competitive market with just another non-recognizable brand. When in fact, the matter is not enough to just have a brand. In the age of viral posts, trendy strategies, and cutthroat competition, anyone who wants to stay afloat needs a good foundation. This means coming up with a logo and a color palette that you think works well with your brand, it's just not enough. And you need to spend as much time as you would on other aspects of your business, like the overall brand and the building process around it. Like other giant brands, you should take your time building a strong foundation, which means going through the brand discovery process to figure out who you want to be as a brand and building brand guidelines that would assemble your brand's entire visual identity. It may seem like it's a long and sometimes confusing process, but the opportunities and rewards that you will reap will definitely be worth it. We hope you guys loved today's video, and if you wanna learn more about the great solutions that can truly change the game, again, don't forget to tackle that subscribe button and give us a like. Now this is Zach with Creative, where business is our sport.